a couple minutes to come on in. Come on in, come on in. I'm gonna give y'all a couple minutes. Come on in. All right, what's up, what's up? I'm giving people a couple more minutes. I know since I'm on a different platform, um, trying to give people time to get on in here, get on in here. How y'all doing? Thank you, sis. Thank you. Oh, what a day, y'all. What a day. What a day. I'm glad y'all stopped by to see me, though. We got some stuff going on. Stuff going on, stuff going on. Hey, Casey. Welcome, girl. Welcome. I'm getting stuff on up here while I'm giving people time to get on in here. Thank you, sis. Thank you. I appreciate the love, y'all. Ooh, if y'all only knew the devil tried. The devil tried, but he didn't succeed. You hear me? Ooh. He was trying today, baby. Trying. Just trying. But that's all right. God is good. I'm glad y'all here. For people trying to make sure everybody can see. While I'm giving people a couple minutes, you know I'm not going to take too much of your time. Woo! All right, let me see what we got. All right, hey, how y'all doing? I'm so glad y'all could join. Okay, we're going to press on because I ain't got time to wait for everybody, right? I'm on your time, and time is precious. So, hey, <laughs> it's Monday, 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 Monday. It is breezy outside here, very. <laughs> But God is good. Welcome, y'all. If you do not know, I'm Quita Quit, and welcome to Real Resilient Conversation. So, before we get started, I got to do some housekeeping stuff. I want to say happy birthday to my sister. She is 32. Woo-woo! Everybody don't make it to 32, so woo-woo! <laughs> happy birthday, Reba. I love you. I am proud of you. I'm so happy. I hope that you are enjoying yourself for your birthday, girl, because you deserve it. You deserve it. <laughs> okay. So after that, guess what? Happy African American History Month. Woo! It's time to celebrate. <laughs> so, oh my goodness. All right. So let me see you clap your hands in the chat. Clap your hands in the chat if you are celebrating with me. Come on. I know y'all got some hand claps somewhere. Am I the only person that's going to clap? I know y'all. Come on. I know I'm on two different platforms, but come on. Somebody can clap. Somebody, a little bit, y'all, y'all, I'm going to work on y'all, work on y'all. <laughs> All right, so, are y'all ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? All right, there we go. Thank you, Al. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so, we're going to go ahead and jump right on into it. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? All right, so, we're going to talk about staying in your lane. So, how many, how, how many people are familiar with it? You mean, let me see some hands in the chat. If you're familiar with people saying, stay in your lane, you heard it before, your mama done told you before when you was in her business. <laughs> um, <laughs> so basically, you know, I don't know if that's just an urban thing or if that's just an everybody thing. I can only speak from my experiences, I guess. 
But staying in your lane is what? Minding your own business, really, right? They be like, stay in your lane. Don't be talking about stuff you don't know nothing about. This don't concern you. Stay in your lane. <laughs> but, uh, guess what? Usually it's because people are like, you don't know about my personal affairs. You don't know about what's going on with me. You ain't been here. You don't know this. You don't know that. You can't understand what I got going on. Staying in your lane, right? <laughs> Staying in your lane. But I think on tonight when you're listening and you're thinking about staying in your lane, usually it's thought about in a negative connotation, right? You usually associate it with something negative. Sorry, I don't even know if my hands are actually God. I bless, I bless, bless. Hope I ain't. <laughs> so, um, if I'm working on myself, um, and I'm saying, um, don't worry about me staying in your lane. Leave it to the experts, right? Which is why this one right here is working on becoming an expert. So I'm working on my degree, working on my certification. So that way I can stay in your lane too. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so in the chat, name some areas that you have. Let me make sure. Okay. Um, name some areas in the chat that you have either told people or... Or have heard people say, stay in your lane. Let me see it. What's some areas in your life um, that people have said, stay in your lane? That you've heard people say, you need to stay in your lane. You don't know what you're talking about. Name them out in the chat. Let me see them. Let me see them. Let me see. I can start giving y'all some hints. What about relationships? Oh, marriages. Oh, uh, uh, uh. stay in your lane. <laughs> right? I'm going to bring y'all down just a little bit, a little her over here. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, yeah, relationships. Um, what about your health, your finances? Oh, mm-mm. I didn't know you was my accountant today. <laughs> Stay in your lane. Uh, what else? Hmm, health options, how you should be taking care of yourself. Um, mm, extracurricular activities. Need I say more? <laughs> um, who or how you date? Um, careers, passions, good one, Will. Children, good one, Ev. Um, religion. Mm, religion, housekeeping. Uh, <laughs> Shanice Trill says she tell people her work to stay in your lane. I'm the expert, not you. <laughs> you came to me for help. Um, housekeeping, how you keep your house, how you raise your children, um, what your dreams are, your aspirations, any of that. I got some little hemp, helpful hints back here. Y'all can't see. That's okay. I'm going to go ahead and break it down for you later. Don't worry about that. We're going to jump on that later. So in the natural driving, like driving on the road and somebody cuts you off because they're not in your lane, you know, because mm, they use a blinker. They just kind of got over. They almost hit you. What are some of the things that you uh you do when they cut you off? Or when they don't stay in their lane? They start veering over into your lane? Let me see it in the chat. What's some of the things that y'all do when people start coming over into your lane in the natural while you're driving? Let me see. What we got? Hey, welcome to people that just joined um, for IG. Thank you for joining in. Let me see. What y'all got over here on Facebook? Some of the things that you do. I can give y'all some hints. <clears throat> I don't know if all y'all say, <laughs> um, <laughs> y'all hunk, um, you holler, you throw your hands up, because I'd be the first one to be like, okay, Lord, obviously you needed it more than me, obviously, <laughs> okay, take it then, take it, <laughs> I know, um, hunk, some people do a little extra, <laughs> I ain't going to ask what y'all do. Y'all ain't going to have to tell. Y'all ain't trying to expose your secrets, I see. So, um, let's talk about, you see this small town behind me, right? We're going to talk about that in a minute because there's a little town, but we're going to talk about that in a second. What I want you to do, focus on is, um, okay, let's talk about the highway because before we get to the town, so back here is a highway. No, oh, gee, I can't point. This <laughs> is a highway, okay? 
So to get off the highway in order to get in town, we're going to talk about some of the things that you do. Thank you, Chanitria. She's going to tell me the truth, right? She done gave him the finger. She done start cussing. She done cut them off, too. She was like, <laughs> turn the other cheek, okay? <laughs> so let's talk about when you're on the highway. You're on the highway, woo, and you like, okay, mm-hmm, just cruising because guess what? There's different lanes on the highway, right? Um, so let's talk about the different lanes that there are in the highway. So, of course, there's the first, the fast lane or the passing lane, which is all the way to the left usually, right? Always to the left for your passing lanes or your um, your fast lane. Your middle lane, that's your, I'm good. I ain't got to be doing all that speeding, but I ain't that slow as over here, right? That's your middle lane. It's usually your people that's going to speed it, right? Um, and then there's your slow lane. Your slow lane is usually your entry and your exit lane um, or just nicely as can be, uh, your slow lane. So, um, so before I give you my breakdown on the lanes, which lane do you feel like you are driving in in your life right now? Are you in the fast lane? You passing everything? You in the middle lane? You cruising? Um, or you in the slow lane? You just getting on? You just getting off? Um, where do you feel like you are in your life right now? Let me see it in the chat. Um, so this gives the opportunity for you to really think um, about it before I break it down and give you Queen of Queen's interpretation <laughs> of um, the stay in your lane and the different highways and what they mean. Um, you give me your input. I want this to be a dialogue. I don't want it to be a, uh, a lecture, if that makes sense. Um, what do you feel like um, are the lanes that you're currently on so uh why y'all are still thinking about it so the fast lane you feel like you already know what you're going what you do where you're going you know how to get there you're just trying to get there you don't have time to be wasting you don't got time to be piddle paddling behind these people that's driving on slow like they driving somebody's granny i ain't got time for that right fast lane i just need to get there <laughs> um as fast as i can in a hurry question is can you stay there the whole time though can you really stay in the fast lane the entire time you're driving? I think you know the answer. <laughs> um, because if you're in the fast lane the entire time, you're going to miss out on your destination. Where are you supposed to get off? You're going to miss it. Yeah, and if you miss it, yeah. <laughs> then it's like you're going on a never-ending cycle because you're rushing it. you you running. Um, you're going to miss your destiny. You're going to miss out on opportunities. You're going to miss out on, um, you're going too fast to listen or even adhere. Because usually when you're in a fast way, you're not going to speed limit. You're going to miss out on the, you know, Tosh, I can't, I can't with you over here talking about it. Yes, you can stay in the fast lane the whole time. <laughs> you're going to miss out on your destiny because you weren't listening. You weren't, um. You weren't ready to adhere to wisdom to tell you, wise counsel is going to tell you, I need to get over so I can get off. There's other things I need to take care of in the city. Me standing on this highway, I'm going to run out of gas. I'm going to need some snacks. I got to use the bathroom. You can't do all that staying in the fast lane the whole time. Okay? So, um, what about the middle lane? Now, see, somebody said that she's in the middle lane. She said, I want to be in the fast lane, but at the same time, I feel like life is going to pass by too fast. It's going to pass. It's going by too fast. Oh, I can't talk. Um, so, when the uh, when life is going to pass you by too fast, because you know how it is. You, speed limit's 55. You going 65, but you kind of like in the middle lane because you like, I ain't going as fast as them over there. And then you you like, okay, we cool. All right, 10 miles over. The people beside you just went 90. You like, oh, oh, maybe I need to get in the slow lane. <laughs> or what if you in the fast lane, you thinking you're doing good, and then the people that was coming up behind you because you weren't paying attention, they got to come over to the middle lane or the slow lane to go all the way around you. Maybe you weren't supposed to be in the fast lane. Huh? Um, <laughs> so the middle lane like I said, usually you're going to speed limit, you're cruising, you enjoying the ride, you enjoying the process in life, you're not really um, 
You're not really rushing in. You're like, I'm, I know I got to get there, but I'm going to arrive alive. Plan to stay. Um, so, um, usually the people that are in the, in the middle lane, um, they make sure that they are able to see purpose. Meaning, if it's purposeful for them to get over it in the fast lane to go faster than the person that is in front of them, then they'll get over it into the passing lane, which is what it's for. Get over into the passing lane to pass by them and then get back where they're supposed to be, right? Um, middle lane. Makes sense? Um, correct me if I'm wrong, y'all. Y'all let me know if I'm wrong. Um, so that you use the passing lane to get in front of the person who is hindering you from going in the speed that you used to be that you are accustomed to going. Um, so everybody that you come in contact with or every experience that you come in contact with, sometimes you got to pass by them. You can't take them everywhere with you, right? They can't roll with you. Uh, so sometimes you got to, in the middle lane, you got to go into the passing lane. You got to get in the fast lane to go around people who no longer serve your purpose. And that doesn't mean um, that they were doing anything wrong. They were just going slower than what you intended to go with your life. So you had to pass by. Um, same thing, there's some things in life that you just grow. You grow from. You no longer do it. That's things that you used to do before. You need to get in the passing lane, pass right on by, and keep going, right? Um, so <clears throat> with the middle lane, you also, you also have the opportunity to... Um, to get either in the faster lane to pass by or in the slow lane. And this is the opportunity for you to get off. So you're on this highway, you like, oh, I got to go to the bathroom. You can't do that in the middle lane. You got to get over into the exit lane or the slow lane in order to get off on the nearest exit to get to what you need to do, right? Everybody has an agenda. Everybody has a plan. And your plans cannot work if you're stuck in the fast lane or the middle lane. There's times you have to transition over to the slow lane. So let's talk about the slow lane, y'all. Slow lane is usually when you are either just entering into a phase in life or exiting into a phase of life. Um, so the same thing. Um, you're getting on this highway called life, and it is, you like, okay, I think I'm ready to try and transition. So we're looking at the highway as a transition point, right? Um, you get on this, this transition and you are just not quite ready, but you know that you got to get there. This is the only way out of town to get to where you got to be. Um, so you get in that slow lane. You're like, I'm on the highway. I'm not quite ready to be doing the speed limit. Maybe you're a new driver. Maybe you're an inexperienced driver. Maybe you're just a nervous driver. However, you get on the highway of life and you are staying in the slow lane. I know I got to get there, but slow and steady wins the race. They still going to get there. They not getting there as fast as the people in the fast lane. But guess what? The benefit of having the slow lane, they can get off whenever they're ready. They don't have to wait until somebody let them in. They already there. They just wait until they put their little blinker on. And get on up and get on up. <laughs> so, um, these are the people that usually go below the speed limit because they want to make sure that they can see what's going on. They're observant. They're like, these people dropping too fast. They're going to mess around and have me in an accident. Um, the same things, right? It's really about taking the time to make sure if it is time for them to get off um, of this ride to go somewhere else um, to try something else different, then this is their exit. Um, and we're going to kind of talk about that when we go into the city. So hold on to that thought. All right. So when you're in your lane, what are you doing? You're worrying about yourself. You just cruising, you got the music on, or you got the wind down, you got, maybe you got kids in the back seat, or you got the family beside you, your spouse, your significant other, y'all talking, you got music on kind of low, whichever, however it's going, right? Um, and what are you doing? You focusing on your lane, you're not focused on what else is going on, the most thing you need to look at is, you got your side mirrors, your side mirrors are your opportunity um, it's either your opportunity for growth or opportunity for change. So either you need to get over or you need to get off. Um, that is how it is for your lane change. So for example, if you are in the middle lane, um, you look in your side mirrors, you're looking to see if there's an opportunity for you to get over 
or if there's an opportunity for you to get over. The opportunity could be for growth. The opportunity could be for change. However, there's an opportunity, okay? Uh, if you are looking in your rearview mirror, you're looking in the rearview mirror to make sure what? Your past or whoever is behind you is not coming up too fast. Your past, you don't want your past to sneak up behind you and get you. Because past like to try and do that. Past relationships, past situations, past addictions, all try to come up and get you. So you got to be looking in your mirror to make sure that life is not trying to attack you. Right? Um, or is not trying to put you in a bad place. Um, sometimes when you're in fast lane, you get pulled over and get a ticket or two waving in and out of the lanes. That's true. So you got to make sure that you know where you want to be. Um, be specific about staying in your lane. <laughs> and you stay in your lane when whatever lane is prevalent to that time in your life. Uh, so different times in your life where you got to be in the slow lane because you don't know. You're still trying to figure it out. Um, you're not really ready to excel and go further. So it's important for you to just stay in your lane, um, in the slow lane. Um, it's times in your life where you got to get there. You know what you're supposed to do. You know where you're supposed to be. And in the fast lane is how you get there. And um, so you get there, but you know when you need to move, when you need to slow down, when you need to learn. Um, all of that is a part of life. So um, your mirrors are a good um, way of evaluating where you need to be. Um, or if you need to change. Because um, sometimes don't you look at that little mirror that you can pull down in front of you, you check and see what's in your eye, you check and see, um, you use it to block out the sun. Sometimes you got to block out things and sometimes you need to be able to look at yourself and see some things. And you have to really look at yourself and reevaluate who you are and um, where you're going. So um, let's also talk about um, the best thing for you and staying in your lane is not always telling somebody else they need to stay in their lane. Sometimes it's you telling you you need to stay in your lane. So we're not trying to keep up with the Joneses. If we ain't got the money to do it, baby, we can't do it. My lane is right here. I'm shopping at Dollar Tree. I, <laughs> I'm going to X, Y, and Z to shop because I can't afford to go to a high-end store. Okay? Um, these are the... Um, staying in lanes, I don't need nobody else to tell me. I need to tell me. Stay in your lane, Quita. Okay? Um, so instead of always being the person to point the finger and say, you need to stay in your lane, maybe we need to take a mirror and look at ourselves and see where we need to stay in our own lane. Right? Uh, the opportunity to use your blinker um, is to indicate to others that it is time for me to change. Um, so those that are following you or those that um, may be in front of you, but are looking behind you because they are your guides, they are your mentors, they are your people that are your support system. Um, if you put your blinker on and say, I can't do this no more, I, I need to get off, they should be able to indicate if they're behind you, they're like, okay, she getting over, let her do her thing. She got time to get off, let her do her thing. If not then over to the left then the, per the people that you are following should be able to slow down and say oh maybe she needs some help or he needs some help what can i do that's where the phone call come in right um so blinkers uh, staying in your lane because that thing called life your gps your spiritual guides um god your angels however way you look at it your gps should be telling you this is where you need to exit and you should be able to hear it and internalize it and make the decision you miss your turn, what happens? Rerouting. <laughs> Rerouting. Make a U-turn. Get off on the exit, right? Listen to your GPS. <laughs> and what makes it so bad is I am guilty of it. Um, not listening to the GPS. And now then I'm stuck because I'm like, now it took me all the way out the way. I could have already had X, Y, and Z if I had listened. If I had obeyed. If I had been Doing what I was supposed to be doing. Was I speeding? Probably so. Was I in the fast lane when I was supposed to be in the slow lane? Probably so. <laughs> However, um, once again, somebody told me that if you looked at life and you realized that nothing you did was wrong, but it was a part of the lesson, part of your testimony, would you then look at life differently? Instead of saying, dang, I messed up. I did this wrong. If it was the other way around, would that change your perspective? Absolutely. 
All right. Um. So, brake lights. Let's talk about brake lights real quick. Brake lights. Man, I know when you're driving, you're like, dang, they keep tapping on them brakes. Tap, tap. What are you doing? Tap, tap. Are they scared? Are they unsure? However way it is, guess what? This is an opportunity to say, ooh, all right, let me slow down. Because obviously they don't know or they trying to figure it out. Or maybe they just need to, okay, all right. Things just jumping down at the wall on me. Uh, <laughs> maybe they just need to get it together, all right? Um, it's still an opportunity to know and pay attention to your surroundings. Um, it's also important um, when we're using our turn signals to just reevaluate um, how the experiences are going to hinder or bless our day. So if you had a bad day, somebody cut you off, do you let it um, hinder the rest of your day? Or do you release it and enjoy the present, which is your gift so your day is a gift right um when you're looking at all of the people that lost their lives how they probably wish they had the day um as their gift um just one more day all right um or people that are just dealing with health issues overall so enjoy the day don't let a um someone that's got into your lane try to tell you what to do with your life try to tell you how to do this try to tell you how to do that Ruin your day. Take it as what they wanted to advise you. Take it or leave it. I always say take out the meat, spit out the bone. I'm not from the island, so I don't eat the bones and the marrow. <laughs> For the people that do, I understand that's what you like. <laughs> However, you take out what you need, get rid of what you don't. Okay? Um, if that means that you hold on to um, the people or the things that are necessary in order for you to grow then hold on to it but if that no longer serves your purpose exit stage left thank you so much for your opinion however um it's no longer needed thank you so much for sharing and keep going i'm real good and i think that's almost a bad thing too i'm real good at being passive aggressive so i can be nice nasty as they like to say because i can say something but i'll do it with a smile i'll say well we won't be doing that today but thank you they like, dang, did you just tell her that she can't have it? Yeah. I just did it with a smile, though. I didn't make it sound like I was being ugly. <laughs> right? Usually, more people are receptive to things when you do it with a smile. All right. So, y'all done with the highway? We ready to get off. We on the, we in the slow lane. We getting ready to get off the highway. Y'all ready to get off the highway? Give me some thumbs up if you're ready to get off the highway. Let's talk about what's, what's in town because it's story time. Y'all ready? Ready, ready? All right. So, there are a lot of ways that you usually get off the highway. Get off the highway, you either go left or right. Well, there's another highway all the way over here. Um, so, Instagram, you can't see. Facebook, you can. <laughs> all the way over here, there's a highway. There's a way to get off the highway. Here in the middle, there's a highway, right? So usually when you're going into town, there's different ways that you get off and on the highway. But when you get off the highway, um, now you got to deal with traffic, oncoming traffic, right? You got to deal with people that's telling you what to do. So now you can like, okay, let me go over here. But this stoplight is for like, three different ways. There's a park over here. So now they got people you got to worry about that's in the park over here. Sorry, Facebook, you can't see. But there's a park over here. Then over here, you got... A whole nother part. So, I know you can't see the words, so I'm just going to tell you what they are. So, this this little neighborhood is talking about your children and hygiene and how you dress them and if you should have them and how you raise them, right? So, this road, this car get ready to come all the way over here into your lane. This car just driving, 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 and what happened? Instead of them, now they in your lane because they done turned out too wide or whatever. So now this person is telling you that you should have children or you shouldn't have children because of how the economy is. When you do have them, you shouldn't, you should dress them. Girls should only wear pink and they should never wear blue. Um, they should only be in dresses. They're telling you how to raise your children, right? Um, hygiene, you shouldn't give babies a bath every day. You should give them a bath um, once a week or twice a week or whatever. Um, how to raise them. Don't spank your kids. 
kids are not meant to be spanked on. Uh, <laughs> don't put them in the corner because it hinders them with their mental, emotional growth. Um, you got to just give them the freedom to let them do what they want to do. Well, however that might be, right? Um, let's see. We talk about raising them. We talking about hygiene, um, dressing them. Children in period. This neighborhood right here, somebody coming over and yelling, telling you how to do it. You like, yo, you don't know how to drive that car? Man, back that thing up. Or now you got to readjust your life. You got to hear what they say. You got to back up to let them come in and tell you what they want to do. And to, after they finish, now they in their lane. Y'all feeling me yet? All right. So over here, we got this car that don't know where they want to go, right? This car here is just trying to figure out where they should stop. So the stop sign is up here. However, things are just jumping off the wall at me. Um, however, <laughs> over here is talking about aspirations, your dreams, your finances. You come over here to park. This car decided they're going to back up and now they park behind you. They in your lane for you to escape. They telling you about you shouldn't have these type of dreams. You're too old to have these type of aspirations. This is what you need to do with your finances. You need to have put all your money in your 401k, whatever it is. They're trying to tell you how to drive your car, basically, your life. They trying to tell you what to do. They done pulled up aside. You stop what you're doing. You like, look, I ain't got time for this. However, they in, they, they in your lane before that. Because as soon as you get ready to leave and you say, all right, I'm done, they're going to back right behind you just enough for you to say, come on now, just move. I don't really want to hear it. I don't want to hear your, your lecture. I don't want to hear what else I should be doing with my money. I'm over it. Okay? All right. So, uh, this down here, I think everybody can kind of see. Facebook, you might not be able to see all of it, but. This little neighborhood down here is, let me see if I can get y'all, angle y'all a little bit better. Okay, maybe. All right, so this neighborhood down here is talking about your health. So this is Health Highway, um, like one of them small highways. So they talking about eating. All right, so they talking about your diet. So maybe you should be on a, what's it called? You should be on a um alkaline diet or you should only be eating you only eat a keto meal or you should only have no carbs or whatever now they're telling you when you eat don't you should eat this amount of caloric intake um your health oh the reason you're sick is because y'all know how many times i don't heard that with fibromyalgia i'm so over it y'all over it okay uh <laughs> They saying, oh, maybe if you worked out, you wouldn't be in pain. Um, if you did X, Y, and Z, maybe you wouldn't feel the way that you feel. It's all because of your diet and because you don't work out enough. And by the time they finish trying to tell me how to live my life, I'm over it. So <laughs> they like, have you tried yoga? Yoga is the new way to heal yourself. You need to just stretch. And at that point, I'm like, okay, thank you. I, I try that. I appreciate you. <laughs> However, fibromyalgia does not just go away. Um, I try. I medicate. I meditate. But it, it's not like I can just wake up the next morning and it's gone. If I don't eat meat or I don't eat gluten or I don't eat, I don't know, whatever. And it changes, then wonderful. But if it doesn't, does that give you the right to hold me hostage to say this is why? Stay in your lane. If you do, if you are not living the life of Quita, then okay, thank you so much for helping and giving me some insight. However, um, I, I think this is still the route that I want to take. Excuse me. So that should be my cue, sorry, to go around and wave as I pass by and keep on going to get them out of my lane. Okay? Um... So this is police over here. So that's usually a uh, big pharma. That's usually whomever that's trying to tell you how to do with your money, how to do with your health, how to do this. This is police right here. I'm trying to police everything that you do, right? At the police station. Um, we talked about here. All right. So over here is talking about um, relationships and dating and um, who you should date when you should date, how you should date. So, 
um, I'm putting the police up here. The reason I'm doing that with relationships, they're like, you shouldn't have a relationship. This is the time to be single. Single is, it thinks singleness is in. That dating thing is out. It's too stressful. Um, and then they want to know if you're dating a female, if you're dating a male. Um, are you dating same sex? Are you dating, are you doing polygamy? Are you doing um, monogamous relationships? It's always a question about who you're dating, how you're dating. And I'm just going to tell you all now, Quita's take on it. I have no heaven or hell to put you in. It is up to you, your relationship with God, to determine what, how and where your relationship should be. Who am I to tell you? Who am I to say you should only be dating a female if that's not what you like? The point of being happy is also something you have to be in alignment with. Happiness doesn't come from another person. Happiness starts with you. But if then when I do decide what's, ha what's happy within myself, and then I decide to enter into that realm, then that's for me to worry about. Don't be in my lane trying to tell me how I should date or how I should love or how I should live. I appreciate your insight. Thank you very much. And I still have to make a decision. Even God gives us the opportunity to make decisions on our own. Right? So if God is making decisions for me, why? I mean, if God is the person that's going to, if God does not, I'm sorry, does not make decisions for me, what makes you think that you have the authority to make decisions for me? <laughs> you do not. <laughs> so over here, also talk about marriage, being single. All right, so you're married and now they tell me you should stay married. However, you're unhappy, you broke, you're disgusted, you're worse off than you were when you were single. they like, you say it for better or for worse. For better or for worse also means that if you did it out of haste, and not out of obedience, now you have caused your own self-destruction um, because you wanted to do things in a fast lane. Y'all see where I'm going? That makes sense? If you're doing things in a fast lane, now you're stuck with this destructive relationship, this destructive financial situation, this destructive um, or mentally, emotionally draining situations, all because you decided that you wanted to listen to somebody else. You wanted to drive in the fast lane and listen to what they were telling you. When you was fine in the slow lane, you were just cruising, right? I've also been on the other side of that. I was in the fast lane. They was like, Quita, get in the slow lane. <laughs> slow down. I was like, I'm fine. What are you talking about? <laughs> and I ran off making some crazy decisions, right? Um... So whether that be marriage, whether that be relationships, whether that be finances, I am a entrepreneurship heart at best. So when they're like, you sure you want to do that? I'm like, at least let's try. <laughs> so when you're doing all this trying, but then you got somebody else is like, well, I don't really think you should even try. You like, go. Because then if I make it, you're going to be like, oh, I remember when she was still just doing it on Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> right so over here we are going to so i decided i'm gonna back my car up but mr policeman gonna circle around the block go around here and then still try to come right in front of me up here i'm talking about fibromyalgia talking about my sleep i'm talking about um supplements and now everybody's telling me fibromyalgia is just a thing in your head. That's not really a thing. You don't really hurt that bad. You never look like you're in pain. Just because I don't look it don't mean that I didn't have to triple medicate and take rest time in order just to get here. You, you see what I mean? Um, so until you've lived it, then the other people that also have fibromyalgia or that are the same because there's different levels. So everybody is not the same. Um, so when you talk to them, then they're like, gosh, you can do that. You can still get dressed. You still got energy to do your hair. And I'm like, barely. They're like, you still working? And I'm like, I don't have a choice. I don't have anybody to take care of me. And they're like, God, I wish I could still work. <laughs> but then if I had somebody else that was telling me, you shouldn't be working. If you hurt that bad, you shouldn't be working. Maybe you don't need to have kids. I heard that one too. Maybe you don't need to have kids if you hurt that bad. And why do you take so many supplements? Shouldn't you, shouldn't you just take what the doctor tells you to take? Well, maybe that's not enough. And maybe I don't want to be stuck on Western medication my entire life. Well, they know what's best for you. So that's what you should do. 
Man, if you don't gum somewhere, <laughs> that's Quita <Queen of> talking. <laughs> gum somewhere with that mess. Oh, how about this one? Because everybody can relate to this real quick. You should go and get the COVID-19 vaccine. And it's people like you who don't want to get it. And you're the reason why we're never going to get better. What? Stay in your lane. You have no idea what my body is like or what my emotional state is like. Do, am I ready to receive something else into my body? Absolutely not. If they can't even figure out what's wrong with me now, why would I add into something else, add something else into me? And then they'd be like, well, we don't know what's that like. I went to the doctor. They was like, God, that's weird. That's, that's really crazy. How long am I supposed to keep hearing that? And then you want to add some other foreign thing that has no type of nothing to back it? No. But then if I, the people that decide they want to, I'm like, by all means, go for it. If your heart is leading you to do it, go for it. But don't tell me that I'm wrong and I'm going to be the reason why the rest of society fails is because of what I make my decision to do. So at the same time, then I, y'all don't judge me now. I kind of end up being, <laughs> I kind of play devil's advocate. And I was like, okay, so if you end up being the person that turns into a zombie because you decided to take it, then by all means, I'll make sure my door's locked and I'll make sure I have guns blazing. All because you decided this is what you want to do. And I'm just being jokeful. But if you feel like you have the um, the audacity to tell me how I should live my life, I should be able to have the audacity to tell you how you should not be telling me what to do with my life. <laughs> All right. All right. So that's talking about this. We're talking about dating. Okay, over here is talking about... Um, your spiritual walk. So spirituality, fasting, um, praying, prayer. Um, if you should do it, if you shouldn't do it. Um, so some people say that you should be doing it. Some people like, my spiritual walk it doesn't mean that I have to stop at a certain time of the day to pray. I pray and I talk to my God whenever I want to. Right? Um, they haven't gotten to their walk with fasting. Well, there's some, I have learned, some Christians that look at people and they say, if you're not fasting, you ain't saved. Now you just turned away somebody who is even considering Christian walk and you have deterred them because they, they say you have to pray a certain way, you got to fast a certain way, you got to dress a certain way, and then we are missing the people that need us the most. All because we are set in how we think people should be in order to get to their spiritual walk. Stay in your lane, people. This is not your walk. I will say this. With everything we're talking about here, with staying in your lane, you know why it concerns me the way that it does? Is because somebody else feeling like they know more about my life than I know about my life is quite frustrating, okay? It is. <clears throat> so I started modeling to deal with my insecure feelings. No one else could uh, could understand how I was feeling. My depression, the insecurity, the frustration, um, the lack of confidence, all of that was happening. So you telling me just to get over it doesn't happen that way. That's just like telling an addict just to get over their addiction. It doesn't happen. They need some help. And for me, my help was to find a different way that I could see myself. And that way, I wanted to feel sexy. I wanted to feel beautiful. I wanted to feel um, wanted. Right, so at 125 pounds versus this 155 now, I mean, the smaller Quita still was insecure about her body then at 125, 130. So then imagine how it is for Quita now at 155. I'm like, baby, I'm a leggings wearing sister. I'm gonna wear some leggings because I can't, I can't keep squeezing in jeans. <laughs> Somebody trying to be in my lane, trying to tell me how I should dress. You a Christian, you shouldn't be wearing makeup. You shouldn't have your hair out. You shouldn't have, you shouldn't be wearing pants. Oh, stay in your lane until God himself disobey. He, I dis, I'm disobedient and he corrects me. I should have that correction. And you might see it and say, it's coming. Okay, wonderful. Thank you for telling me that it's coming. However, it's not there yet. So when it comes, let me be the one to change. Not changing for you because guess what happens? Then we end up bitter. We end up bitter. And when we end up bitter, we do not end up better. So, 
I have learned that you can say, baby, have you thought about this? Have you thought about it? It's just a thinking moment. It is not a, what you need to be doing is, you don't need to be wearing that. Why you got that on? What you need to be doing is this. Why you look like that? You shouldn't have that on. You have just deterred that person. So even if the opportunity was there for them to do it, they no longer want to do it. All because of your approach. Staying in your lane is sometimes just, so if you're looking at it from a parental standpoint, you see your kids doing something crazy. You're like, oh, here we go. You're about to end up in jail because you don't want to listen. Instead of saying, you need to stay your tail at home. I ain't got time. I'm not coming to get you out the doggone um, jail this time. Next time, this is it. Well, what about this? Can you tell me why you're making these decisions? What is your thought process behind what you're doing? And if they can't find an answer, they say, I just want you to take a little bit more time and think about that and how it will affect me, your dad, your mom, your sister, I'm sorry, me, your dad, your brothers, your sister, your cousins, your grandparents, whoever. If they have a relationship or just with themselves, if you go down this route, these are the options that may end up with you. Okay. Um, so, long story short, <laughs> staying in your lane is not always for the other person. Sometimes it's for you. Okay. Um, so, if you have not followed me, um, I want to tell y'all thank you so much for stopping by um, and joining me. I know it's been a little bit longer than I expected. However, I'm also giving a couple minutes for people to come in and um, get started. So if you don't know how to find me on um, IG, I'm on Real Resilient Convos, or Conversations. On Facebook, I'm on Real Resilient Conversations by Queen to Queen. Um, on TikTok, I'm on Real Resilient Convos, C-O-N-V-O-S. Um, on YouTube, I'm on Real Resilient Conversations. And then if you have ideas or topics you would like for me to discuss, um, email me at realresilientconversations at gmail.com. So we will see each other, guess what, in two weeks, y'all. So on the 15th, it's the day after Valentine's Day. Everybody should be good, right? <laughs> Get all your dates out the way. And you at the house relaxing um, on your day off for most of you. Make sure you tune in on the 15th at 8 o'clock. Um, oh, and then I have one more thing. So, I am going to um, have a chance to win. So, I'm going to do a raffle. So, the opportunity to win the rug here. So, if you got little boys, um, this is a, or even little girls, or you just want to have this at your house to remind yourself on how to stay in your lane. Um, I'm going to raffle off the rug, um, the cars, and... I have um, Jimmy Choo, um, so Jimmy Choo perfume, a whole bottle, brand new bottle, Jimmy Choo perfume. I have a shirt, all right, I have this shirt, and I have ooh, this shirt, I don't know if it's probably... I don't know if the colors are showing on there. However, um, so these are original paintings by an artist. And so we wanted to showcase his talent and make sure that you have it to wear as well. So I have um, the cars, um, yeah, the cars, the rug, two shirts, and Jimmy Choo perfume. So this is your chance to win. Make sure that you are following me on the different platforms. So um, as of tonight, those that follow, I have until, what's today? Monday, I'm going to give it until Wednesday. So as long as you are following me on one or more of the platforms, that will be on IG, um, Facebook, let's see, IG, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube. Um, as soon as you subscribe, I will find out and I will put your name in a nice little bag for a chance to win. And then if you win, and or should I say when you win, then I'll make sure I get your information and send it to you. And that will be it until the 15th. Anybody got anything for me going once, going twice, anything around the room? All right, y'all. I love y'all so much. I am so grateful you stepped by to see me and to listen in. So until the next time after Valentine's Day, love, peace, enjoy. I will see y'all on the 15th. 
All right. I can't wait to hear y'all topics. Love y'all. Bye. <laughs>